Setting the pace is often a term you'll hear often when we talk about any race. Whether you are running the 1500 meters on the track, winning points in a league, specific businesses trying to lead the industry, or even countries trying to compete against each other in terms of their growth. In most cases, the one that is at the front of the race is the one who controls how fast the others have to go. In the case of boxing, it is usually the one who sets and controls the pace who will win the fight. And if anything, it is probably one of the most important aspects when you are in the ring if you wish to win. In today's video, I'm going to dissect this factor and give examples of setting the pace in a fight and how the best in the sport use this to win fights and control them. This should hopefully help those that box themselves or those that want to watch and understand the importance of this. So on that note, let's get right into it. The style of fighter. The first thing I want to address is very important. Depending on the style of the fighter, it could determine how you set or control the pace. If you are an aggressive pressure fighter, your forward footwork, slipping of punches and inside fighting are going to be key. On the other hand, if you're someone who likes to fight on the outside and prefers counter punching, it's much more about controlling the pace in most cases, using feints, jabs and intelligent quick footwork. But now, just like with anything in life, there is opposites to everything. There's night and day, the sun and the moon, male, female, or to give a more boxing analogy, floating like a butterfly or sting like a bee. You can be dominant in one style, but it's important to know your weaknesses so you can counteract other styles of fighting, especially those that fight at a high fast pace. Even better, you can add a bit of both into your style to help you set the pace of each style you come up against. But let's take a look at both sides of pacing. Aggressive fighter pacing. Now for fighters that like to take more of the initiative, this is usually an easier way to show the judges that you are setting the pace of a fight with forward momentum and also the volume of punches you're throwing when up close or on the inside. This can be horrible for some fighters as from the first round they can't keep up with the pace or they have weak slower footwork so they can't get away, even poor counter punching ability or a lack of inside fighting ability which can therefore lead to a quick knockout or getting hurt. Typically this is more pressure swarmer brawler styles that like to fight this way and it's definitely a more obvious way to set the pace. However, how many times have you seen a guy overcommit himself too early and gas out fighting this way? You need to be able to pace this aggressiveness for you to continue applying pressure or the roles could reverse over time if the fighter gets a second wind. Just think of Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman or Joshua versus Klitschko. If you have any other good examples, feel free to comment below. But to help you out, here are some good examples of aggressive pacing. Julio Cesar Chavez is perhaps one of the best forward pressure fighters of all time. You would use this relentless pressure to suffocate his opponent with his constant forward movement to disrupt their game. As you can see against Mayweather, who is actually a fighter who liked fighting on the inside at times. But sooner or later, this pressure from Chavez would just close his world into a tight box where he couldn't get away. While the classic boxy motto is hit and not get hit, Chavez and other swarmers like him changed this approach to seek and destroy through their high pace. But it's not reckless in the way that he does it. When he was always moving forward, he would weave or was ready to slip or duck any return punches. There was an end goal of this pace and pressure that was to ensnare each opponent in his own game. He could get on the inside and eventually break you down over time. Another good modern example is Gennady Golovkin, who would use his high pace by using a stiff hard jab to help push you back towards the ropes, while making sure he was always in a position to cut off the ring and fight at a mid-range so he could throw those powerful shots by continuing that pace. 
I've also done a video on Virgil Ortiz, who's a terrific example of fighting at this high pace, and I recommend you check that out. However, despite all this, you need to be careful not to outpace yourself, as you can very quickly run out of energy if your cardio level isn't where it should be. And then you can see the fight flip on its head. Outfighter counterpunching pacing. Now let's look at the other side of the coin. Boxers that like to fight on the outside and focus more on defensive movement can very much still set the pace or control it, much like a matador. It's about reacting to the opponent's movement and rhythm. Great counterpunchers or even outboxers are mainly known to control the pace through their jab or lead hand. As their opponent tries to close the distance, they are using their lead or to jab, catch hook, or counter with the backhand. Usually, they also have very good linear and lateral footwork to help them get out the way. If they stick and move, even better. If an aggressive fighter is constantly trying to chase them down and is not landing shots, it can be extremely tiring and frustrating as they can throw unnecessary shots and even sometimes get countered rushing in. If they are not in any way intelligent or smart in how they come into range, using things like upper body movement or feints, they could get badly hurt. But let's look at some good examples. Probably the ultimate fighter at doing this was of course Floyd Mayweather Jr. A good fight to watch is his rematch with Maidana. For the first round, all he had to do was use his lead hand and footwork to control the pace. As you can see, Maidana is trying to push the pace by closing the distance, but for the most part, he keeps getting caught with the variation of Floyd's lead hand. Where is it going to land next? Head or body? Will it be a hook next? This causes indecision and hesitation from Maidana, therefore Floyd sets and controls the fight. Floyd was a brilliant example of controlling this pace to suit him. Sometimes he would look at the clock to see how much time he would have left in a round. He knew exactly how to pace himself for all fights. Just listen to Andre Berto talking about when he faced him. Very smart at, at uh, you know, dictating the pace to, um, you know, cause like I said, when I was in there with him, you know, he manages his time. He looks up at the clock like four times during a round. Mm -hmm. He'll move around, move around, look at the clock, move around, move around, look at the clock, grab you, tie you up, look at the clock. Mm -hmm. You know, bop, bop, you know, hit you two or three times, just enough to win around and make his way up out of that crowd. Mm. This is obviously very hard to master something like this. It takes a lot of experience, very good ring IQ and awareness to get to this level. Another brilliant fighter that controls pace is Terence Crawford, and a great fight to watch is against Victor Postol, where he would really dictate the pace through his lead hand, feints and movement, while waiting for the right moment to counter. As Postol got frustrated trying to land a punch, he upped his pace. He would come into range at the wrong moment and get caught with Crawford's backhand power shot and get hurt. From here, Crawford was very much able to fight at the pace he wanted to through his great use of rhythm and timing with his punches. It made Postol under control of what Crawford wanted to do. Changing the pace. Now a fighter who I think does a good job combining both high and slow pace is Canelo Alvarez. The Mexican in more recent years has liked to start fights at a very high pace, especially against more defensively minded boxers like Saunders and Caleb Plant. He will close you down using his high guard defense, waiting for the opportunity to counter with power shots. Naturally, as the rounds go on, this will no doubt tire you out. And this is where Canelo will sometimes take a slight break in some of the rounds to go in the back foot. He will usually like to go back in the ropes and this would actually give him an opportunity to counter punch with some big shots. And also this would cause some hesitation from his opponent having to change the pace and attack Canelo. Now this could obviously be seen as a negative against better opposition as they know he will try to do this at some point in the fight to get back his energy. 
But as much as Canelo may be seen to be taking a break, he's still able to compose himself and be able to bounce back in most cases and start applying that pressure to get the knockout. Some other really good examples of changing pace include the likes of Sugar Ray Leonard who would use dazzling footwork on the outside before then quickly changing his pace, coming in with quick, fast, explosive punches. While someone like Marvin Hagler was very good at changing his rhythm through his use of feints and timing his perfectly placed shots. And obviously both of them would eventually face each other, which was an incredibly high paced fight with Leonard mostly on the outside using his footwork and Hagler closing him down. Feel free to comment below a fighter that you think is good at changing and adapting his pace throughout a fight. What can I do to set the pace? Now a lot of this comes down to your ability, cardio, ring IQ, experience. Personally if you're in amateur boxing you will know that you'll have to fight at quite a high pace because there is only 3-4 to four rounds and there's not much time to prove to the judges why you should win the fight. Whereas in professional fighting, it is a lot slower for fighters. They can take their time and build themselves into a fight. But in most cases, you should try to fight at that high pace early on, or at least try to dictate it. And there's obviously ways to improve this. The first thing to consider is physically with your cardio. This is so key if you want to be able to maintain the pace, whether this is in amateur or professional boxing. You need to be able to fight at that high pace or even that slower pace or changing pace throughout a fight. One of the first things I recommend is that you start getting in your road work. This will obviously help build up your stamina when you start sparring or are in the ring. But not just doing your 3-5 to five mile runs, you need to introduce things like interval training on top of this. Adding in a quick sprint burst with a 1 minute rest, then a sprint again. You can do that with all types of exercises that you do in your training. Example, you can do interval training with heavy bag, doing light soft punches before quickly using explosive power punches on the bag, then going back to soft punches again. Overall, this will help your cardio and it will build it up. From this point on, it is then about working on your footwork and punch timing so you can discourage your opponent with your movement or your counter punching. It's then obviously important for fighters to try this out in sparring as this is the best way to change the level of your pace and get real experience getting used to what pace you can fight at. Another vital aspect is understanding your rhythm as it can help you identify the movements of your opponent so you can exploit it. And I highly recommend you watch my other video on that. I hope this video has helped you understand the importance of setting and controlling the pace of a fight depending on what style of fighting you are or when you're going to be watching fights going forward. I'd love to hear your thoughts on setting and controlling the pace in boxing. Is there a specific fighter you think is great at doing aggressive pacing or defensive pacing? I'd love to hear your comments below. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.